Yeah, we touched on canonicity in some of our earlier discussions, but it's part of a broader kind of problem or issue, I think, that uh, not only the Orthodox Church, but the Catholic Church, and most of the long-established religions have. Uh, and that is, is that they, their concerns and what they're spending time on and what they're endlessly debating, like their issues and stuff, are, are totally removed from the daily lives of ordinary Christians, right? I mean, you look at this symposium the Orthodox Church had, and I've, I've seen bits and pieces of it, I've read about it, I've read reports, I've read some of the speeches and the papers that were presented. And they're very, very interesting if you are a church theologian or an academic, uh, but to the average Joe that goes to church on Sunday, they don't touch on what his real issues are. You know, problem, things like canonicity, does the average church goer really care? And you look at some of the subjects, like I, I, I couldn't understand half of them, to tell you the truth, because I'm not a scholar in church dogma, but a lot of them have nothing to do with the world of reality, of, of today's reality. It's like going to an academic conference of ex subject experts in some field. You know, you probably won't understand 80% of it. They understand it, and to them it's very important, but what relation does it really have to my life and to the real world? And I think, unfortunately, the ecclesiastical authorities and all the churches have removed themselves way too much from what the essential purpose of the church should be. The, you know, over the course of 2,000 years, the church has acquired this huge, you know, infrastructure, dogma, canon laws, rites, rituals, ceremonies, etc. You know, that probably had their place in medieval times or in, in you know, the 7800 AD or whatever. But I think, unfortunately, it has also taken the church away from its essential role. The original church, you know, the apostles when they went out, the original uh, uh, preachers, whatever, they were teachers. And that's what the purpose of the church was, to bring the Word of God and the teachings of the Word of God to the people as teachers. How much of that teaching is happening today? A young person, say a teenager, goes to church, and it's a beautiful ceremony, but they start talking, you know, with you know, Greek terminology and parables that, you know, made sense 2,000 years ago in Palestinian society, but have no bearing or, or, or relevance to today's life. They don't understand it, and they don't understand what it has got to do with them. Uh, the same thing with, you know, all of the, the rites and the rituals the, and the rules the, uh, of the church, you know, the sacraments and things like that. That didn't exist in the early church for the first two, three, four hundred years of the church existence. Purpose was simple. Go out there and preach. Go out there and teach. You know, bring the teachings and, and you know, the, the, the principles of, of Christianity to as wide a mass as possible. There were no organized you know, physical churches, there were no liturgies, there were no sacraments, there weren't, you know, communion, confession, uh, on and on and on and on. I mean, there was obviously a reason as cor a course of time went on why some of these things were brought in, but I think they've come to dominate what the church does rather than be tools towards an end. They've become an end in themselves rather than the means of an end, which is to bring the average joke closer to God and the teachings, you know, the relevant teachings. Uh, which I think have gotten totally confused and kind of been pushed to, to the sidelines. I know I'm, I'm probably verging here maybe on, on heresy, but it's the truth. Uh, the, the original church, the, the, there was no hierarchy, there were no priests, the, deacons, bishops. You look at it now, you know, priests, archpriests, uh, uh, bishops, archbishops, uh, deacons, uh, cardinals, popes, uh, you know, and then you've got gradations of priests with different headgear and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I find it hard to, to, to see a lot of the meaning of that. There's, there's a purpose and a place for symbolism, for, for icons, for ritual and ceremonies, but they should be secondary to the essential teachings of, of what, the, what the church is uh, and not be, you know, 90% of what the church does. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that the church has got to get serious uh, about bringing its, its teachings and the way that it does the teaching and bringing the Word of God to the people into the 20, 20th century. It's got to start using the language of the 20th century. You know, the parables, the whatever, have got to be of relevance to the 20th century. Like who says that, you know, the Bible stopped, you know, in the second or third century BC. Why can we not be adding additional gospel? Are there no devout, you know, scholarly, uh, holy people that can add to that canon of, of teachings with more, you know, uh, uh, modern uh, additions to the Bible? 
um, you know, you're just getting me started here because there's a whole bunch of other things that need to be brought into the, the into a sphere of relevance in our modern time. Ordination of women. They're, like Christ never said that women should not be teachers. Well, they were teachers then. Now they, I guess they call them priests. That was an arbitrary decision that was made, you know, many many centuries after the original apostles. Uh, same with the, you know a lot of the dogma and the canons and the sacraments or whatever. They came a lot later on, and basically they were created by I hate to use the term old men in suits, except they were different suits at that time. But that's what it was. It became a very patriarchal, you know, chauvinistic group of people that set the rules for what the church should be and how it should work. And they are, do not necessarily, I think, relate to you know the essential teachings of what Christianity is all about. But that you know. So rather than convene conferences to debate canonicity, which means nothing to the average Joe, and in fact we all know that canonicity is not a theological issue, it's a political issue. You know, the fact that you know the the canonical church for you know Ukraine and Russia moved from Kiev to Moscow, that was not a theological decision made by an assembly of you know religious people with the best interests of the people. It was a political decision made by the rulers of the time for political reasons, right? You know, and unfortunately, whether it's the Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church, there's been always been that strong tie between the secular authorities and the church authorities to essentially control. And that, unfortunately, has carried on to this day. Putin makes very effective use, as you know, the Russian church to do that kind of stuff. And, you know, yet we still here, even in the free world, spend endless amounts of time debating canonicity when it's really, you know, neg some neg negligible importance to the actual faith and to the lives of the, the ordinary Joe. It's caused a, a, a rift in the Orthodox Church here in, in Canada. You know, and the, the vast majority of the, 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 the Orthodox, you know, basically will abide and stick to whatever the Metropolitan in Winnipeg, the Metropolitan Uri says, because, you know, people are not revolutionaries, particularly when it comes to religion, you know, that has a well-established and traditional base. But there is a, 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 a significant proportion of people that are, you know, the, the ones that are dissenters, some of them are, are, you know, a little on the fringe, loony fringe, but a lot of them are very intelligent, you know, motivated, uh, good, faithful people, Christians or whatever, that are very concerned that political issues and political considerations are taking higher priority than issues of actual faith and actual theology, that, you know, it's interfering with the essential purpose of the church. And it, it's a valid comment. It's a valid issue that needs to be taken into account. Why should the Orthodox Church, you know, uh, adhere to a principle of canonicity that was discredited centuries and centuries ago because the original, uh, you know, movement of the, the seat of, of the Eastern Orthodox Church from Kiev to Moscow was basically done at the end of a sword, right? And it was done by political reasons, there was bribery, there was extortion, there was blackmail, there was, you know, there were deaths, there were, you name it. It, it, that, it, it was moved for completely unchristian reasons and really it was done illegitimately. Yet everybody still has this pretense that it's canonical. Well, you know, yes, frankly it isn't. It's not canonical, it never was. You know, and to kind of pretend that it is and adhere to it just, I don't know why, is, is kind of silly. It just kind of uh, cheapens and debases the whole uh, essence of what Christianity is all about. The same way that, you know, the Catholic Church also has this whole thing of succession, you know, direct succession, canonicity of the popes, you know, from Peter, etc. Well, you look at what happened during the Middle Ages. Like, bishoprics were bought, you know, they were, they were part of the aristocracy. There, there were at times multiple bishops. The bishops engaged in, in, you know, murder, assassination, war, you name it. They, for several centuries, you know, the papacy was totally discredited as a Christian, you know, uh, structure. And yet, you know, they, they want to preserve. Even those folks supposedly were legitimate. Give me a break, right? You know, and then this whole thing, you know, got further extended into papal infallibility. And the same thing, even though the Orthodox Church doesn't have infallibility, 
you know, you dare not question, you know, what comes from on high because it's, it may not be dogmatically or canonically uh, infallible, but it's accepted as such and it takes forever to change, you know, something that's been accepted, you know, as tradition or fait accompli for any length of time. Uh, but that no longer works in today's world. You know, they, 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 people are educated. They know what's what. They, they understand history a lot more than they used to. They are faced with, uh, you know, day-to-day -day issues. They want a dialogue. They don't want a one-way dialogue, which is all that the church is really providing to them now. You know, you will do what we tell you. Well, no, you know, in our liberal democracy, Western societies, that's not the way society functions. And, you know, and nothing in all of that, you know, there's nothing in liberal democracy that runs counter to the essential Christian theology or Christian beliefs. You can bring the two together, but you've got to have the people more involved in the decision-making process and not rely on a you know, small number of people wearing uh, you know, funny hats somewhere and locked away in, in uh, Constantinople uh, or, or Rome or whatever, making arbitrary decisions that run contrary to what the vast majority of the people believe.